So, welcome to introduction to aerodynamics. This is a, an introductory course on aerodynamics. The subject matter of aerodynamics is finding the or determining the forces and moments that acts on any body that moves through a fluid. In our case, we are mostly interested in air, but the basic principles are same irrespective of what fluid it is. <coughs> Considering the body as an aircraft, see when aircraft moves through a body, it experiences certain force. As you know that aircraft exerts forces on the air and air in turn exerts forces on it and this force and moments and estimation of their contribution to the motion that is what is the subject matter of aerodynamics. Since these force and moments comes because of the pressure and viscous stress that develops on the surface of the aircraft. So, aerodynamics try to determine these pressure and viscous stresses on the surface and of course, these pressure and viscous stresses are dependent on the overall flow. So, you can say that aerodynamics is the study of the flow about any body that is immersed in a fluid and moving through it. We are mostly interested in the body of aircraft and if we consider aircraft, let us say what are the forces that acts on an aircraft. We know that there is a buoyancy force, but usually the buoyancy force is so small that it is hardly considerable when compared to the total weight of the aircraft and we can neglect it for further motion. Now, <coughs> aircraft considering the simplest possible flight, which is that aircraft flying in a straight level flight, that it is going straight and keeping its altitude more or less fixed. Under this condition, you know that the forces need a balance. The weight force needs to be balanced by some force. Similarly, the engine thrust is also balanced by some other forces and these forces are in this configuration of flight are known as the lift and drag force. That is when the aircraft is in a steady level flight, its weight is balanced by the lift force and the thrust is balanced by a drag force. Both of these forces are in aerodynamic nature. That is they comes because of the relative motion of the aircraft and the air or the fluid. Now, if there is any disturbance in the flight, of course, the moment develops and the configuration of the aircraft changes. The of course, coming from the pressure distribution and viscous stress distribution and they are distributed over the entire surface of the aircraft. Okay, it's not necessarily aircraft, it can be any body which is immersed in fluid. Now, as you know that a distributed force can be represented by a system of force and moments, same thing can be done here also and these force and moments they can be resolved in any three mutual orthogonal direction. If we consider these three mutual orthogonal direction are like this, remember this direction, the let us call it x axis, the x axis is along the relative wind, it is along the relative wind, that means it is along the direction of the relative velocity between the body and the fluid is neither horizontal nor vertical or anything. It is along the direction of relative velocity between the body and the fluid. So, as an example, if we consider that an aircraft is moving in atmosphere which is at rest, then the relative wind is simply the 
direction of or opposite of the direction of the aircraft speed. So, in that case the x axis is opposite to the direction of the aircraft velocity. If an aircraft is flying through an atmosphere at rest, the x axis is along the opposite of the direction of aircraft velocity or aircraft speed. However, in general we will call it the direction of the relative wind, the x axis is relate in the direction relative to the wind. And let us call at this stage the z axis, which is upward, but not vertical, it is normal to approach the x axis. So, it is upward, but it is not vertical, since x axis is not horizontal, the z axis is not vertical. And the y axis is okay, which is perpendicular to the plane formed by x and z. Usually, for an if we consider the body to be an aircraft, we call it the direction to the right wing, right side of the wing with respect to the pilot. So, the right side can be with respect to an observer, the observer may be in front, observer may be behind. So, of course, the right side will change. So, it is right side with respect to the pilot, usually that is called the starboard side. These names came from shipping, where they have the left side is usually called the port side. As ships comes into a port, its left side is usually faces the port, towards the port. So, that left side is called the port side and the right side is called the starboard side and same nomenclature is used here in aircraft also. So, the right side of the aircraft is called the starboard side and <laughs> the left side is called the port side. So, now <laughs> the axis system that will that is usually followed in all aerodynamics. You will study in other subjects the aircraft motion, the dynamics of complete aircraft and in that context you will define various type of axis system, but the axis system that is used in aircraft sorry aerodynamics is like this. The x axis is along the relative wind, z axis is normal to x axis upward positive and y axis is normal to the plane of formed by x and z and to the starboard wing side is positive. <coughs> now, if we resolve the force in these three direction, in these three direction, the component in the x direction is called the drag force. So, you see that the drag force is a component of the force along the relative wind direction. The drag force is along the relative wind direction. And again taking that example that aircraft moving through atmosphere at rest, then it is opposite to the direction of aircraft speed. The drag force is opposite to the direction of the velocity of the aircraft. The force which is normal to this x axis that is along the z direction is called lift. So, lift force is normal to the relative wind, it is not vertical, lift force is not a vertical force, it is normal to the relative wind and the force in the y direction is called side force if it is positive if it is towards the starboard. If its direction is towards the starboard it is positive. <coughs> the three moments the three moments about these three axis are called as pitching moment if it is about the y axis. The pitch let us come from the moment about x axis, the moment about the x axis is called rolling moment. Now, what will this moment do? As you can see that if an rolling moment acts on an aircraft, it will try to bring one wing of the aircraft down with respect to the other wing, one wing will go up, the other wing will come down. 
that is what the rolling moment will do. If a rolling moment acts on an aircraft, its one wing will come downward, the other wing will go up. If the starboard wing goes down, the rolling moment is called positive. <coughs> Similarly, the moment about the y axis that is an axis which is along the length of the wing or almost along the length of the wing, a moment about that axis is called the pitching moment. And what will be the action of this moment? As you can see that if there is a moment acting about this axis, either the nose of the aircraft will go up or go down. If the sense of the moment is such that the nose of the aircraft goes up, then it is called a positive pitching moment. Similarly, yawing moment, a moment about the z axis, which can be called approximately vertical. It is not the vertical direction, but approximately vertical direction. Then a, a moment about it, what will it do? It will take the nose to the left or right. It will tend to move the nose towards the left or towards the right. <laughs> if if it tends to move the nose towards the right that is towards the starboard side, the young moment is taken as positive. <coughs> now, <coughs> so we have defined the three aerodynamic forces and aerodynamic moments. All these forces and moments comes because of the relative fluid flow over the body. So, this is also another basic premises in aerodynamics that in aerodynamics we consider the body is at rest while the fluid is moving. In the real world, so if you look to an aircraft, it is the aircraft which is flying, the atmosphere is more or less at rest there might be a small wind which is say negligible as far as the speed is concerned is negligible to the speed of the aircraft. While an aircraft flies at a speed of some 700, 800 or even 1000 kilometer per hour, the wind is about some 40, 50 even less than that sometime 20 kilometer per hour. So, which is negligible. So, usually it is in the real life the aircraft moves that air is at rest, the atmosphere is at, at rest. In aerodynamics, we consider it the other way. It is always taken that the body is at rest and the fluid is moving through it. That is, we consider the relative velocity. And <coughs> all these forces, this lift, drag, pitching moment, yawing moment, all comes because of this relative relative velocity because of the flow field. Of course, that is the subject matter of aerodynamics to analyze that flow field and to obtain these forces. Now, think about an aircraft which is flying straight and level. When it is flying straight and level, of course, no moment is acting, no moment is acting. And again, as long as it flies straight and symmetric, you see that the side forces or this yawing and rolling moment they do not act. This yawing moment and side force rolling moment they come into picture only when there is an asymmetric flight. If there is no asymmetric flight these forces or moments do not come into picture. So, during the flight time of an aircraft most of the time the aircraft is not experiencing any yawing moment or rolling moment neither any side force. Of course, there are certain situation 
when all of these are acting or even these yawing moment rolling moment on side forces are acting, but most of the time during its flight only lift and drag and possibly pitching moment acts. <coughs> now, before we move to the real subject of aerodynamics, let us <coughs> give certain important information as far as aircraft is concerned. You know an aircraft consists of different components. The most important components of an aircraft are its fuselage, the wings, horizontal and vertical tails and engine. These are the most important component of an aircraft. The horizontal and vertical tail they are also like wings <coughs> and so the most of the conventional aircrafts as you can say perhaps we can sketch that they look something like this. this is what is the side view of an aircraft. If you see it from side, this is what it looks like a side view, where this main body is called the fuselage, where it houses all the important payloads. If it is a commercial airliner, this is where all the passengers will be. <coughs> this is the wing as it appears in a side view. Of course, in a side view you see only a cross section of the wing. This is called the horizontal tail plane of the aircraft, here also you see only the cross section and this is called the vertical tail and see there will be an engine usually attached to the wing. So, you can name it this.
the wing the horizontal tail and this is vertical tail. <coughs> this is what is the, the plan view. Here we have shown the wing as something like trapezoidal, but that is not necessarily true that their wing has to be trapezoidal, the plan form. The plan form can be of various shape. It can be even a triangular, what is called the delta wing. And see, we have shown here the leading edge, this is called the leading edge, and this is called the trailing edge. <coughs> so, the leading edge of the wing we have shown here as a straight, it is not necessary to, to be straight, it can be curved. So, this is a representative view of the aircraft or representative aircraft, you can say a conventional aircraft. There are many non conventional aircraft where you can clearly identify all these different components in such a manner. Now, as far as the aerodynamics is concerned, the most important component of the aircraft is the wind. Because this produces perhaps more than 95 percent of the total lift that the aircraft produces. For a conventional aircraft, almost the entire lift comes from these wings. So, this wing is the most important aerodynamic component. Tail is of course, a small wing the horizontal tail, vertical tail is a vertical wing we can say. <coughs> now, we have seen this cross section of the wing which has a special shape, usually it is quite thin, the thickness is of the order of say, the, of course, it is a variable it is not that for all aircraft the wing thickness is same. The thickness is of the order of something like say 10 percent, 12 percent of the core, maybe even less. Now, we will define what is this core and some certain important definition which are required in the later stages of aerodynamics that will come forward. The shape that the wing takes in its plan form, in its plan view is it called its plan form. The shape that the wing takes in plan view is called its plan form. So, in this case the plan form is trapezoidal. So, when we call the plan form of a wing, it simply means that how, how does it looks when we take its plan view, okay. <coughs> that is when we take its projection in plan. <coughs> then the distance between one wing tip to the other wing tip that is the distance from here to here, the distance from here to here is called the wing span, distance from left wing tip to the right wing tip is called the wing span. In doing so, you see that we are considering even that part of the fuselage. The wing is connected to the fuselage, so in within the fuselage the wing is not there, the wing is not extended, but while talking about the span we talk about the entire wing tip to wing tip as if the wing is inside the fuselage also. Another very important quantity is the plan form area. As you have seen that the plan form is simply the view that the wing takes in its plan view. So, the area of that plan view is the wing area. 
Now, then there is a question that when you take the plan view of the wing, as you can say that in the plan, the wing is up to this, to the fuselage. So, this is the plan, in this case the plan view is say a trapezoidal. So, the area of this trapezoidal, this two trapezoid, but it is not exactly so. It has to be extended within the wing, uh, within the fuselage. That means, while finding the wing plan form area, the wings will be extended up to this and the area of these two fuselage these two trapezoids, not only up to the fuselage, but to the center of the fuselage. Extend the plan view or plan form to the center of the aircraft and then find its area that is what is the plan form area. <laughs> square root of sorry square of span divided by plan form area is called the aspect ratio of wing. The aspect ratio of wing is so span distance from tip to tip There are common aerodynamic notation for these quantities. The span is usually denoted by B. The span is usually denoted by B, more or less an universal notation. The plan form area is denoted by the word letter S, capital S. The aspect ratio most often denoted by a joint AR. In some cases, you will find only A also but most often it is used as a joint A R and that is the notation we will also follow. It is simply B square by S. Chord denoted by C it is distance from leading edge to trailing edge. Now, you can see that in general this chord is then changing, it is not fixed quantity and there are various mean chords defined. One is of course, a geometric mean chord, the other is called the aerodynamic mean chord.
how you define this geometric mean chord it is obviously quite The small s is to represent semi span, half of the span. Small s stands for b by 2. Now, the wing we have already talked about wing tip, the wing at the junction or at the central axis as you said that the if we ex extend the wing to the center of the aircraft, then the chord length at that or that is what is called the wing root. Coming back to that old figure. the wing root here. So, this is root, this is tip, this is leading edge, this is trailing edge. there will be a difference in the chord length at the tip and chord length at the root and their ratio is called the taper ratio. Tip chord to root chord the ratio tip chord to root chord is called the taper ratio. Okay, we forgot to tell aerodynamic mean chord. The aerodynamic mean chord is defined as If the wing is shipped backward with respect to that is from the root to tip, 
if it goes backward with respect to the say the y axis then the wing is called a swept back wing and the angle between the y direction and the leading edge is called the swept back angle. Again let us with respect to this figure itself, if we have this is the direction of the y axis. then this angle is called sweep back angle. Eventually, what we defined is specifically it is called leading edge sweep back. It is called leading edge sweep back, though we have called it sweep back because the sweep back may vary at different that is the leading edge may have a different sweep angle than the trailing edge. The trailing edge sweep angle will not be same as the leading edge. And also if we take any other line on the wing at certain fixed percentage of chord, then the sweep angle of that line may be different or rather in general they are different. Let us see that we think about a mid chord, mid chord location that is at every section on the wing we locate the mid chord and then join it by a line, then we get a mid chord line. Again, let us take it one particular wing cross section only, let us consider. And let us say this is the direction of y axis. So, this is leading edge sweep. Similarly, this will be trailing edge sweep. Usually denoted by this. And similarly, let us say we have mid chord line that is at every station we are locating this line is passing through the mid middle of the chord at every station. Or say think about the 25 percent chord line. So, each line has all the lines have different sweep, sweep back. And as we mentioned that in many cases the aircraft leading edge itself can be a curved line and if it so happens, then you can see that the sweep even on a particular line itself changes. They are called variable sweep geometry. If the leading edge is curved, then the sweep angle changes along the leading edge itself. 
so they are called variable shift back wing. <coughs> Now, we will come to this the section of the wing, the section of the wing is called an airfoil, old British English was aerofoil, so sometime we may call aerofoil and nowadays in the American English it has become airfoil, so <laughs> both will be used. wing cross section geometry This is what is unusual shape of airfoil. <coughs> if we join it from leading edge to trailing edge, the line joining it is called its core. the line joining the leading edge to trailing edge is called the core <laughs> and at any particular core wise location if we have the distance between the upper and lower surface is called its thickness. this is called the upper surface of the airfoil and this will be calling the lower surface <coughs> in aerodynamics of airfoil usually this point where the cord intersects the nose nose of the airfoil is taken as the origin of the axis system and it is conventional conventional to take the x axis along the cord in the study of aerodynamics usually the leading edge sorry the coordinate origin is placed at the point where the cord intersects the nose that is here and the x axis is taken along the cord and of course, the z axis is normal to it. <coughs> the most important quantity in aerodynamics as you are saying that is called an angle of attack angle of attack it is the angle between the relative wind and the cord line if we call this is the relative wind we will be denoting it by u infinity <coughs> why will come later infinity and this 
angle between this and this is all alpha. And remember that the force lift force is normal to this u infinity and the drag force is along u infinity. <coughs> For a supersonic use, often the leading edge of the airfoil is also pointed, while for subsonic use, the leading edge is smooth and round, but for supersonic use, often the leading edge is sharp. <coughs> now, we have defined thickness and curve. In aircraft, almost all length, almost all length parameters are non-dimensionalized with respect to curve. Often it is mean aerodynamic curve or mean geometric curve, either of them. So let's say that the thickness or all other parameters of an aircraft will always be expressed in terms of percentage curve. Airfoils are usually designated by their thickness. So, when it is called that an airfoil is 10 percent thick, meaning the airfoil has maximum thickness of 10 percent of its curve. That is, if the curve of the airfoil is say 1 meter, then the maximum thickness of that airfoil is 10 centimeters. If we call the airfoil as 10 percent thickness, is the maximum thickness. As you can see, that the thickness changes from leading edge to trailing edge. At the trailing edge, the thickness becomes practically zero, and the maximum thickness occurs somewhere ahead of mid chord. Depending upon the type of airfoil, it is ahead of mid chord. <coughs> if the core is if the core does not intersect or does not divide the airfoil in two symmetric hub Okay, that is upper half and the lower half are not symmetric with respect to the chord, then the airfoil is called a camber airfoil. Then the airfoil is called a camber airfoil. If, if it is symmetric, that is, if it is exactly at the middle of the airfoil, then the airfoil is called symmetric. So, the airfoils can be either symmetric or asymmetric, which is called camber. Camber, C A M B E R E D, camber, camber airfoil. It is not symmetric about the chord. Now, in such a case, of course, you can see that you can imagine or you can construct a line which is exactly at the center of the airfoil. At each section, at each station, you can think about the thickness and then take the midpoint and join all the midpoint, and you will get a line which is just at the middle of the airfoil, within the middle of the airfoil. So, that line is called the mean line or camel line. that line if we join the 50 percent of the thickness line at each station and construct a line that line is called the mean line or camber line. If <coughs> the mean line is above the curve then the airfoil is called positively cambered that is when the mean line is above the curve 
it is positive camber, if the mean line is below the curve, it is negative camber. Usually, all practical aircrafts have positive camber. <coughs> Something else we missed that is a dihedral. What is dihedral? See that an aircraft has two wings on its two sides on the left and right and think about that <coughs> for each wing if we think about the cross section all the cross sections are an airfoil uh, all the cross sections are an airfoil. So, thinking about that wing over the semi span at each each station it has its own airfoil. Now, the chord of each of these airfoil chord of each of these airfoil may not be in the same plane. If they are not in the same plane oh sorry then the wing is called a twisted wing a geometrically twisted wing. When the chord at each section is not on the same plane then the wing is called a twisted wing. And in such a case, you can see that the angle of attack at each cross section will also be different. <coughs> the angle of attack at each cross section will also be different. However, if the chord are on the same plane, then the wing is called untwisted, and in such a case, if the if all the airfoils are same airfoils, then the angle of attack at each section will also be same. A wing is or aircraft is called a di having dihedral wing when the two wings are not on the same plane. In, in a front view with a dihedral wing it will looks like this. So, this is called a dihedral wing and this angle is called the dihedral angle. <coughs> Similarly, if the wing is such that its tip is drooped with respect to the root then it is called anhedral. The the opposite call is called anhedral, where the tip is droops, tip droops or the tip is below the root it is called anhedral. <coughs> so, we now have defined dihedral and also wing twist. I think we will stop today. What we have done essentially is we have defined certain important components or important parameters as far as aircraft is concerned, which will be subsequently used for aircraft aerodynamics and which of course, as a student in aerodynamics you should know in the beginning before you start your aerodynamics. <coughs>